Right, I'm starting. The time is going, I'm starting. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be talking about document ranking, specifically for retrieval augmented generative pipelines. And the way I want to start this, just in case there are people who are not familiar with RAG pipelines, a quick intro into what RAG pipelines actually do. And to do that, I've got a very um, simple example here. I've asked GPT, what are the different rankers in Haystack? And I've got this response, and it's a pretty long-winded response, and I've got a list of rankers as well. But the unfortunate fact is these are not correct rankers. We do not have these rankers in Haystack. I think only one of them is correct. We have a documentation page about rankers. You can scan that QR code to go to it. Um, and so the idea between, behind retrieval augmentation is to basically augment the instruction we give to a large language model with the relevant content, the context, so it can actually reply in an accurate manner. So the way that looks like is the following, and here I've cheated. Um, because I've given the instruction and I've basically pre-processed our documentation page, the first bits of it, um, and I've provided that as context. And my instruction reads, given the documentation, answer the question based on the contents of the documentation. And then I've copy-pasted my documentation. Now, the problem is, again, I've cheated. I've copy-pasted it. I've made it look nice. This step is actually not that straightforward. If I have pages and pages and pages of documentation, I tend to want to have a system that can retrieve the relevant parts of that documentation and then embed that into this part of my, um, my instruction, my prompt. And on top of that, one other thing I want to say before I go to the next slides is that we talk about RAG a lot in terms of question answering, but again, what RAG does is really based on the instruction you provide. So if I were to instruct it to give me a summary of this documentation page, then I've got a summarization um, application. If I say something different, uh, such as give me a broad explanation on this wider topic, then I've got maybe something we, that we call long-form question answering. So it looks a bit like this. Usually, to retrieve the relevant context, we have a retriever component. And that can be connected to a bunch of things. It can be connected to a database, like Weaviate or Milvers or OpenSearch. <laughs> or it could be connected to simply an API. It could be the World Wide Web, your Slack, your Discord, anything like that. And we often also have a re-ranker or a ranker module after these retrievers. So I want to explain why we have that. And I'm specifically going to talk about diversity. Um, and here I've tried to color code it to depict what's going on. Um, let's say we have a retriever that's returned to us uh, documents based on similarity search. Here at the top you'll see it goes kind of like blue to green to red. So imagine this similarity search retrieving like a ranked list of documents where the top three are the most similar and the blue ones are similar to each other. So the different documents, but they're probably covering pretty much similar topics. And let's say we have an LLM that only allows for this context window to be inputted as the context for whatever I want to do. Now, if I were to say I have a question like, um, what are the impacts of global warming? Give me like a broad explanation. Maybe I want that uh, reply to include the impact on you know, politics and climate and geopolitics. And if I only have super similar topics covered in my context window, this is a bit of a problem. So we use diversity ranking to basically shuffle that up. Diversity ranking in Haystack, which is what I'm presenting here, um, uses a greedy approach. So we have the most similar document at the top. And then we look at that document again from the pool of uh, documents that the, center, the similarity search returns, so they're still relevant we find the most dissimilar to that one. So it allows us to introduce some sort of diversity within the context window we have. And another uh, re-ranking method that is very new that we're using, and if you scan that QR code, it takes you to a collab that has both the diversity ranker and this one I'm just going to talk about now. This one is called Lost in the Middle, and it's based on a very rec recent research paper that found that um, the answers generated by large language models were frequently based on contexts that appear at the beginning of the context window and at the end of the context window. Now, this again presents a problem where, in some cases, um, 
the context that appears in the middle can be a lot more relevant and usable than the context that appears at the end, for example, if I'm only using similarity search. So again, lost in the middle is kind of like a reshuffle. We call it re-ranking, but it's kind of like a reshuffle that makes sure that the most relevant context is at the beginning and end of the context window um, that the large language model is seeing. Quickly about Haystack, because I'm going to show you how we use this in Haystack. Haystack is our open source large language model framework. It's all written in Python. That QR code should take you to our GitHub. And we uh, work on the concept of pipelines. One pipeline type is called the indexing pipeline, where you might build out a pipeline that does um, document conversions, pre-processing, et cetera, that then writes to your database, which can be a vector database, or you might just decide to do that, um, the retrieval step via an API. And then the query pipeline is the interesting one because this is where we define what our retrieval augmented generative pipeline looks like. We provide the building blocks, the components, and it's up to the developer how they um, combine those depending on the application they want to build. So a classic one is a retriever followed by a prompt node for retrieval augmentation. And here, again, the developer has a lot of optionality on what kind of model provider they want to use, for example. Um, so I might have a retriever that uses an open source hugging face model, for example. Um, but I might decide that my generative model is going to um, be a SageMaker deployment um, of a large language model. Again, up to the user. This is the only code snippet I have, and then that's going to be the end of my talk. Um, so the way we use a diversity ranker in uh, Haystack the first bit of the code snippets, you'll notice that all um, initializations of the various components we need. So here I've given the prompt, using the provided paragraphs and question, craft a comprehensive answer about the broad topic. So we know that we want a diverse set of documents for this specific application of retrieval augmentation. And then I've decided to use GPT-4, um, so I'm using OpenAI directly. And the retrieval step, I've decided it's just going to be web search. So this is basically whatever Google is returning to me. Um, then I'm going to use a diversity ranker. And then the last bit of the code snippet you see is simply pipeline construction. So the first thing that gets the query is the retriever, which retrieves from the web the most relevant context. And then I'm following that up by diversity ranker. This makes sure that everything is reshuffled and within the context window that the large language model sees is getting a diverse set of documents. And then simply I follow that up by a prompt node. And that's it. Um, these two QR codes, the first one goes to an article that one of my colleagues wrote about these specific two um, rankers. They are the newest rankers we have in Haystack. And then the second QR code is actually taking you to our GitHub page. Um, Haystack is going through a major update. Um, it's going to become Haystack 2.0. It will be a breaking change, but it allows for developers to build a lot more flexible um, pipelines and give them a lot more room to move in how, in, in how they design their pipelines, specifically when we're talking about retrieval augmentation and large language models. And that's it. And I'm one minute in advance. Great. Thanks.